Do you guys want to hear something wild? Did you know that Inception is like a metaphor for filmmaking? Did I just blow your mind? Yeah, probably not. This theory has been all over the internet since basically Inception first hit theaters in July of 2010. I know I got it from Venerable Institute of Film Analysis, Crack.com, and on YouTube it's been covered by the likes of Wisecrack, Patrick Willems, and David Chen. For those unfamiliar, the theory's premise is that Cobb's goal to incept an idea into Fisher's mind is exactly the same as that of a filmmaker, the construction of a narrative to provoke an emotional response in an audience. Each member of Cobb's crew is analogous to a specific role in filmmaking. Cobb himself is the director, the leader of the team driving all pieces to a specific goal while unable to keep his own subconscious from bursting through. Saito represents the studio, the one funding the expedition whose goals are purely monetary, yet still insists on having hands-on control. Eames is the actor, researching a part and transforming himself to embody someone else. Yusef is the special effects guy, the technical genius who doesn't get the credit he deserves for creating the most dazzling visual effects in the film. Did you see that? <laughs> Arthur is either the assistant director or the producer, the second in command keeping everyone organized and on schedule. There's some debate that Ariadne is either the production designer, given she physically builds the dreams, or the screenwriter helping Cobb flesh out the details of the dream. I lean towards the latter given Nolan usually works with a co-writer, but he didn't with Inception, so really either interpretation works. Nolan himself has commented on the connections between his dream crew and a film crew, stating that when writing a team, he drew on the team dynamic he was familiar with. If the characters are analogous to a film crew, then the central dream heist is analogous to a film itself. This is reflected in how the rules of the dream, that we just start in the middle of the action and orient ourselves naturally, that the mere impressions of places are enough to complete the illusion, that we don't usually notice the strange inconsistencies until after the dream is over, are all equally true of film going as they are dreaming. The dream levels themselves are less the surreal visions of subconscious we get from David Lynch or Satoshi Kon, they're more evocative of film subgenres. Level 1 is your urban action movie in the vein of Heat or The Dark Knight. Level 2 really owns its Ocean's Eleven influence, as well-dressed sexy people in an elegant setting con another well-dressed sexy person. And Level 3 is a James Bond movie. Limbo is the raw creative space where films are conceptualized in the first place. Movies have been compared to dreamscapes since Sigmund Freud was first developing his theories of psychoanalysis, and the parallel between dreams and filmmaking can be seen in movies as disparate as Eight and a Half and Inside Out. But what makes Inception unique is its specific focus on the relationship to the audience. With that in mind, I want to talk specifically about Fisher's role in the story. In terms of the filmmaking metaphor, Fisher represents the audience. He isn't a part of the crew, yet his response is what everyone is working towards. He is aware that he's dreaming, just like an audience is always aware that movies are constructed pieces of fiction, and yet the experience of that fiction can still have real effects. Fisher doesn't actually think his father had a secret will, but his emotional epiphany still sparks change, just like how I know Inception isn't real, yet this scene still makes me weep no matter how many times I watch it. This scene is in fact crucial to the point I want to make today, which is that Robert Fisher is the most important character in Inception. I'm not disputing that Cobb is the protagonist. The story is told from his perspective the whole way through, and his choices drive the plot but Fisher is the emotional core of Inception. Though both men have to overcome the death of a loved one, Fisher's arc is more transformative. Cobb does grow and he's able to return to his children, but there is a distinct sense that Fisher is a fundamentally different person, having finally come to grips with he and his father's relationship. Fisher is also the most empathetic and layered character in the movie. Unlike the rest of the cast, who are very charming but are pretty basic types, Fisher is a fleshed out person with interiority and depth. He tries to act like he's all business, but layers of vulnerability are continuously seeping through, and Killian Murphy brings these wonderful little inflections which really bring the character to life. Fisher's depth is thematically essential, as Inception is largely about the relationship between the filmmaker, the film, and the audience. Perhaps the first point that resonates is simply how much work goes into making an audience feel anything. 
Consider that the symbol of Fisher's emotional catharsis is the pinwheel from his childhood memory. The simplest object, yet one contextualized by the sheer complexity of the film's high concept. So much of Inception's runtime is dedicated to explaining the rules of the world, as characters plot and craft the intricate details of their heist. Success hinges on assembling a bunch of people with different skill sets, workshopping a narrative, and building three levels of dreams to fully root within the subconscious. Hell, just getting Fisher into an environment where they can perform the heist in the first place involves purchasing an airline. The amount of time and effort spent to bring Fisher to this point is frankly staggering. This speaks to the vast infrastructure of time, money, and labor that goes into Hollywood filmmaking. No matter how seemingly simple a feeling may be, the fact is dozens if not hundreds of people had to work their asses off to impart that emotion on a viewer. Even as Fisher's arc is reaching its emotional climax, the film still reminds us of how much behind the scenes work went into it by having Eames sinking an explosion with the kick. Emotional impact is contextualized by technical precision. Fisher has some sense of this work. He is aware that he's dreaming after all, and consents to going under with the team, but he's blind to a lot of the details. Particularly noteworthy is that Fisher knows really nothing about Cobb, and it's here where Inception makes a death of the author style argument. The crux of Roland Bott's 1967 essay is that the meaning of a text exists not in the intent of the author, but in the mind of the reader. While Cobb's subconscious is manifest in the dream and affects Fisher, Fisher is not limited by this influence. So just as I was touched by the curious case of Benjamin Button without realizing at the time that David Fincher's own father had recently passed away, Fisher does not need to be aware of Cobb's emotional catharsis with Maul in order to have a catharsis of his own. And this tracks with Nolan's own presence as a filmmaker. It isn't hard to spot the common interest in his filmography. Time, Dead Wives, Michael Caine, but he's also someone who is very private in his personal life, and doesn't generally comment on the meaning of his films. Because meaning isn't found in the author, it's found in the reader. Consider that in Inception, while the dreamer builds the world of the dream, it is the subconscious of the subject which fills it. In other words, it is in the interplay between author and reader that meaning is created. Inception also contextualizes artistic creation within a business context. The film's ending has a certain wistful quality, as our crew exchange glances which wordlessly say, Man, we've been through a lot together. But the core piece motivating the entire heist was Saito's need to break up his competition. These guys made a massive intervention in someone's life, purely because some rich guy paid them to so he could make more money. It sounds kind of messed up when you put it that way. But is it really that different from going to see studio movies? Aren't all Hollywood films business projects? Do you think any of the higher ups at Regency Enterprises care that Ad Astra was one of the most profoundly touching theatrical experiences I had last year? Probably not. Their goal was to make money. That I was moved to tears is incidental. You know, I'm just realizing that every example of movies that touched me in this video are about daddy issues. Don't read into this. Now you could take a very Horkheimer and Adorno attitude to this aspect of Inception, where films are merely commercial goods to provide easy pleasures which lull the public into passivity while perpetuating a capitalist system. And that's valid enough, I guess, but I also think it's dismissive to reduce someone's emotional experience to a movie as merely part of a cycle of capitalist industrial production. I mean, it is that, don't get me wrong, but that doesn't make what Fisher feels any less valid. Fisher's role as the audience becomes especially salient in the climax, when Cobb needs to choose between Fisher and Maul. In her own essay on Inception, Maria Bastillos argues that Maul is not just Cobb's projection of his wife, but represents his muse. Maul is a metaphor for the artistic inspiration that drives Cobb's creativity in the first place. She is deeply rooted within his subconscious and is constantly influencing the work he does. But while that inspiration can help fuel artistic creation, it's also a danger. <laughs> to make art purely for your own inspiration is indulgent and closed off. Touching an audience involves extending beyond just yourself. To quote Bastillos, by the end, Cobb will have to choose, explicitly, between Maul and Fisher. 
This is a very exact analogy. Who are you doing this for? For your own vision or for the audience? Hard though it may be, Cobb ultimately chooses Fisher. Because as important as individual inspiration may be, the key element that art, particularly a communally enjoyed art form like movies, needs to be art is an audience.